All right, so there we go. Making remote work work. So again, I just wanna thank everyone for coming today. And I wanna thank our partners at the Abdullah Al-Hurair Foundation for Education for reaching out to our partners and our other you know, uh, university institutions to, to help get um, your students here. Um, and I hope that today you guys learned something new. Um, in our webinars, I typically like to engage in discussion with all of you participants. So I will be asking you questions as well. Um, and I hope you guys engage in the chat um, and we can learn from each other as well. Um, so before we start, I actually wanna um, you know, have a poll and um, just to, just to kind of you know, know about how you heard about today's webinar. So um, if you guys can vote, you should see on your screen um, a question and you can vote on how you heard about this webinar and, and where you're joining us from. So I'll just allow uh, 10 more seconds for that and, and we can see. So I see a lot of people are joining from email. We have from social media their school and universities. So welcome, welcome all. We're so excited. All righty. So I will be closing this poll. All right. So let's talk about what we're going to learn today, right? So today we're going to discuss the major differences between remote work and virtual work. So you're going to learn what these two words mean. There's remote and virtual. They're often used interchangeably, but they actually have different meanings. Um, so we'll make sure to educate you on that. The components of a virtual working environment. So what makes up working virt virtually or working remotely? What are the benefits? You know, what are you, uh, you know, what are the benefits of working remotely? What, what makes it different from working in office? And of course, the challenges. So so challenges of working remotely. And of course, we're going to share top tips in adopting remote work. So a little background about me. So I mentioned to you guys that I work for Arizona State University. Arizona State University is in the United States. I live in Dubai. So I'm actually going to be using a lot of my experience and a lot of my team, uh, team members' experience in this webinar. So hopefully you'll be getting kind of a firsthand, um, you know, firsthand experience on what it's like to work remote and work virtually, as well as our tips. Um, so hopefully this will make this um, a bit more exciting for you today. So I, I know that, you know, I mentioned before that I want to kind of have a discussion with you guys. So I hope you engage in our chats. I want you, want you to share with us in the chat, what's one thing you've enjoyed about working or studying virtually? I know a lot of us had to kind of shift um, at, uh, during COVID-19, um, you know, we were going to school or university or to the office, and now we have to suddenly use the computer and our internet to connect with um, uh, our institution. So what's the one thing you guys enjoyed about working from home? Um, and let's read some of the answers. So al Anud said the flexibility of time and place. That is absolutely spot on. Um, you have the um, flexibility of choosing when to, where to work from. You want to work from home, you want to work from, from a cafe. The flexibility is great. Privacy, couldn't agree more. The use of technology. Yeah, it did teach us a lot on how to use different softwares and, and programs. And I, I mean, I completely agree. Um, not waking up as early. I could, I mean, 100% spot on. You save that extra hour in the morning instead of getting ready. You just, you, you, you know, you get that one extra hour of sleep. I, <laughs> I completely agree. A lot of us are not morning persons. Okay, so that's um, one thing you enjoyed. What's one thing you did not enjoy about working from home or studying from home? distractions. Absolutely. Because when you started working or studying from home, so does your siblings and, you know, the rest of your family members. So they're always constantly, you know, they're, they're your biggest distraction. Um, and of course, we miss, we miss being with friends. There's the loneliness. I 100% agree with everyone. It's so great to see you guys all participate. All righty. There's no eye contact, sitting at home. Yeah, the in, uh, don't get me started about unstable internet. I completely understand. 
All right, great. So it's great to know what you guys think about um, you know, virtual work. So moving on to the next slide. So why are we talking about this today? So before the pandemic, before COVID-19, you know, studying on Zoom or studying on, um, you know, using internet wasn't something we actually entertained. It wasn't, it wasn't an idea that, you know, made sense to us, right? So, you know, even having this webinar before the pandemic, any talk I would give, I would go to a university, to an event hall, but then COVID-19 made us shift, right? We started giving these virtual webinars on Zoom. We were connecting with different universities outside of the country. It allowed us to utilize technology to do our job. And so today, more than 69% of companies are offering remote working options. So before the pandemic, remote work was only something like, okay, you know, if you have a child sick at home, you can spend two extra hours working from home. That's the only, that's the only way remote work was entertained, especially in the Arab region. But now a lot of companies are allowing their, their um, employees to, to spend the majority of the days work, uh, days of the week working from home or maybe taking half days. So it's something that, you know, we've come accustomed to. And so this hopefully today is um, to, to help teach you tips on how you can, um, you know, be productive and beneficial as we transition into this remote working environment. So I know in the beginning we said we're going to help between remote work and virtual work because you will see these a lot in job descriptions, even before the pandemic, right? They, they ask you that, you know, you must master working virtually in a global team or, you know, remote working options available. And sometimes you'll get confused. Well, what's the difference between both? So working virtually, you can work virtually anywhere in the office or outside of the office, okay? Because you're using technology to meet with people. For example, my company, I'm going to keep on, you know, referring back to Arizona State University. Those who are in Arizona State um, University working from the United States and Arizona who go to the office, they work virtually because they're using technology to connect with me, right? So virtually, you're using technology to connect with people or to um, complete uh, assignments or tasks. Where remotely, it means you're working outside of the office. So I am working remotely and I'm working virtually, right? Because I'm also using technology to connect with my team in the US, okay? So what can you expect from working remotely? You work across different time zones, work weeks, holidays, and global teams, okay? So again, between me and the United States, between Arizona, there's an 11 hour time difference, okay? So my morning start is when their night starts, okay? <laughs> uh, when my evening starts, their morning starts. So there's always these you know, different time zones and we have to sometimes accommodate. So sometimes I'll stay up late at night to have a meeting their morning and sometimes they'll do the same. Okay, we had before 2022, we had different work weeks where in the UAE, our work week was Sunday to Thursday, um, and they work week, their work week was Monday to Friday. So um, obviously being aware of our weekends, as well as holidays. So in the Arab region, we celebrate Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fatr, Mawlid Nabawi. They celebrate 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas. So that's their holidays, and that's our holidays. That's our time off. So we need to be wary and respective of our different um, holidays. And of course, working on global teams. So, you know, in my team, I have team members who are in Arizona, the headquarters. We have um, a few team members in Dubai. We have, um, even in the United States, we have in Texas, California, North Carolina, we all work together virtually. We use technology to work and connect with each other. So that brings us to point B, collaborative technology. So what do we mean by collaborative technology? This is also a term I want you guys to remember. So collaborative technology, it's the use of technology to facilitate group or teamwork. So a computer or the Zoom software, that's facilitating teamwork, right? Because you're not working alone, you can use it to connect with other people. So um, Google Suite, so you know Google Docs, Excel, where you can share the document while other people work on it, that's all collaborative technology. Video conferencing, again, collaborative technology. So technology okay? Because you will see this a lot in upcoming um, 
you know, uh, uh, you know, job postings and as we move forward uh, to this post pandemic work environment. C, working from home or location of choice. So again, I work from home, but I can't sit home every single day. So on days where I don't maybe have a meeting online, I'll go work from a cafe. I have a library two minutes down the road that I often work from. You know, you can choose where you wanna work from. Um, my grandma last year was sick and I had to go and take care of her. So I flew all the way to Seattle and I in Washington, Seattle, and I stayed with her um, for two months working from there. Um, and then I came back to Dubai. So I have that choice of where I can work from as long as I'm getting my work done on time and I'm being protective, uh, sorry, productive, um, I have that choice. And lastly, onboarding in person or virtually. So when you join a new company, you are often onboarded. You have this maybe one week where people um, in, the, in the company or your manager kind of teaches you new um, you know, programs you need to be aware of how to, um, you know, uh, you know how, how to go about your job. That's the onboarding, right? Meeting new team members. So when you're applying to virtual jobs, you need to prepare yourself for both. So for me, when I joined, I was onboarded in Dubai virtually. And then two weeks later, I was flown out to Arizona where I met the team and also they continued my onboarding. So you always have to prepare yourself for both. So, Components of a remote, okay, mukawinat, al-amal al-iqtiradi or al-amal min al-manzil. First thing first, technology. Internet is the most important thing. You need to have a reliable internet connection, okay? Um, does it make sense for you to, um, you know, join a meeting and you can barely hear the other person and the other person can barely hear you? It kind of becomes distracting in itself, okay? And so you also need a computer and a webcam. And your company will also give you um, software that you need to download on your computer. So make sure you're consistently updating that so you're not um, going, you know, you're not lacking in your work. B, creating the right physical space. So again, you have the freedom to work from home, your cafe. There's offices that allow for, for different people around different companies just to go there and work. It's just a co-working space. But, you know, regardless of where you choose to, to work from, you need to make sure that it doesn't create any distractions for you, okay? Um, you are, you know, you're able to concentrate, you're able to be pr productive. Um, if you choose to work from home, make sure you have a rest for yourself that no one will walk in in the middle of your meeting or someone that can cause you dis distractions. Home ergonomics, also a new term you should learn, ergonomics. Now, what we mean about ergonomics is that you're securing a space that's comfortable physically for you. So when I first started working from home, I didn't really take home ergonomics seriously. One day I would work from the couch. One day I would be working from the, the dining table. Um, and I realized that I was doing a lot of crouching for a long time, that after a few months, I had terrible back pain. Um, I didn't take ergonomics seriously. I did not secure myself somewhere comfortable because when you're working at home, you're spending a long time, long hours in front of a computer on a desk. So you want to make sure that, you know, your posture is, is, is right. Um, you know, everything is accessible for you. That's, you know, it's very important for you to sustain a positive physical health. Um, and so a lot of offices, if you go, um, if you do choose to work in an office, you see that they've secured comfortable chairs, you know, a standing a desk. So a desk that can elevate um, from time to time for you to stand up and, and sit down whenever you needed. So ergonomics are really, really important. Okay. The last point, traveling when needed. So when you're working remotely, sometimes you'll have events or sometimes you'll, you'll have meetings where your company will ask you to travel. So make sure you put that in mind that, you know, you need to have an up-to-date passport. You need to be comfortable with traveling. Um, and it's honestly sometimes one of the most exciting parts of your job, right? When you get to uh, go to new places and, and, and meet new people and, and, um, and, you know, it's kind of like a mini job adventure <laughs> already. So what are the benefits of working remotely? So first thing is savings. So who saves an employee, myself, and the employer, the company? 
So as an employee, I'm saving time and money. So before the pandemic, we do have an office in Dubai for the Dubai employees um, where we used to go um, every single day there. It would take me an hour in the morning because of rush hour to make it to the office and then an hour back. So I was losing two hours of my life a day in my car. So when I started working from home, I regained these two hours for myself. I had more time if I wanted to even focus on work or focus on my personal life. I had these two hours back. I was also saving money on transportation. So I don't need to pay for gas anymore or public transportation. I was, you know, I had, I had a, you know, I had that pocket change left for myself. And of course, if you're the type that, you know, tends to, um, you know, eat in a cafe or outside while, while you're at work, you also save um, that, that money as well. Now, from a company perspective, they save money as well, because when employees are working from home, they don't need to spend so much money on office equipment. So let's say I'm a manager of a company and I have 200 people working for me and I've allowed my employees to work from home. I don't need to rent an office space to fit 200 people. I can just rent a small office space for 50 people for those who wish to come from time to time. So I'm saving you know, money on, on space and equipment. Second, Freedom in creating and selecting your preferred workspace environment. I'm not going to stay too much, spend too much time because I did cover it, but you do have independence of, of choosing a place um, where you can work from. It can be in the same country and in, in a different country. It can be from your home, wherever you feel you're most comfortable and productive. Flexibility with managing your own schedule. Again, so let's say um, when you're at home, you're kind of in a way, you're your own boss when it comes to your schedule, right? Yes, you have tasks you need to submit on time, but how you do these tasks sometimes, you know, differs. So let's say at your own time, you want to wake up in the morning and, and check your emails first. You want to um, work on a task from yesterday. Uh, maybe you need to go pick up your child from school, right? You're kind of, you're, you're kind of managing your schedule and you're getting things done on time, but in your own way. Work-life balance. So again, when you're working from home, it's not nine to five at, at, univers at, your, sorry, at your office, right? You're not spending eight consecutive hours at your office. You can sometimes take a break in between, again, to pick up um, kids from school, to go to your doctor's appointment. You don't feel rushed in your personal life because of your work. Employee diversity. So I mentioned in the beginning how we have different team members um, across the region and across the world. So we have a really diverse team, uh, team member. So I'm, uh, uh, sorry, team, um, team in general. So I am Syrian. Uh, my colleague is Iraqi. We have uh, American, we have Egyptian, we have all of those all in our team. So we have a really diverse, uh, um, you know, set of, of minds in our team. Increased employee retention. So retention, you're retaining employees Employees are staying with you because they have better flexibility at managing their own schedule. They have a better work-life balance and they're happier. So they choose to stay. Why would they leave if they're happy with, you know, how their personal and their professional life is being balanced? Greater accommodation for people of determination. This is also important. So people who have physical um, impairments or disabilities, their home is usually their most comfortable working environment because they've set up their home to accommodate their needs. So instead of, you know, sometimes offices, as much as they try to accommodate, you know, people of determination, people with physical disabilities, you know, it's not going to be as great as a person who's already established those accommodations for themselves. Um, so they also get that um, pool of, um, you know, that pool of, you know, people of determination, that pool of talent that you typically, you know, wouldn't see at the office because there's sometimes those challenges. Okay, so poll. I'm gonna launch a new poll and I would like to see what you guys think. Oops. So do you guys think that employees can be trusted to work from home. So you're gonna see a pop-up on your screen. Okay, so let me see what you guys think. And in the meantime, I will be reading some of your chats.
Okay, so I'm gonna leave five more seconds. All right, so I'm gonna close the poll and I'm gonna show you guys the results. So 86% of you guys said yes, employees can be trusted to work from home and 14% of you guys said no. So that's an interesting uh, divide. All right. So what are the top 10 challenges of working remotely? Discipline, time, and task management. So again, discipline, when you're at home, you have all these distractions. It's hard to kind of stick to your desk for long hours of time, right? So for you to kind of, um, you know, tackle that, it's good to send an agenda or put an alarm, you know, on your, uh, on your, you know, use your phone to set an alarm, like, okay, every two hours, I'm going to take a 15 minute break and make sure you don't deviate from that alarm. Staying motivated. When you go to the office and you see people around you working, it kind of motivates you to work too, right? When you're at home, you don't get that same motivation. So a thing I do, I like to go to libraries and co-working spaces um, and work from there because again, I see, like I feel motivated when I'm surrounded by an environment of people who are also working. Lack of in-person onboarding. So again, some companies probably will not fly out new recruits to the, the home company, right? So they will onboard you virtually. And you don't get that chance to um, see your teammates in person and develop some sort of relationship. Or maybe you're too shy in the beginning to ask questions about certain um, you know, tasks and softwares that you feel kind of nervous doing so. Um, so, I mean, that's sometimes a challenge for a lot of people. Four, less time to bond with teammates. So that's a challenge, especially if you're working across different time zones, because you can't even bond with them virtually. It's sometimes hard to set your schedules on the same, you know, on a kind of on the same time. So on the next slide, we're, we'll kind of more go into detail on things you can, you know, top tips you can implement on how you can overcome these challenges. Um, may not be ideal for all personal types. So if you are an extrovert and you love being around people, you're going to find a bit of difficulty um, adjusting to working by yourself at home. Um, for introverts, maybe it's something that they're more comfortable with, but uh, people who like to be surrounded with people, they kind of find a little difficulty at, at the beginning. Setting boundaries. So inability to switch off and unplug. So what does that mean? This is very important. So when you're working at home, you sometimes lose track of time. And instead of, you know, when you're in the office, you kind of have those eight hours, that nine to five. But when you're working from home, you know, you kind of will go over five o'clock where you check your emails at 8 p.m. Or, you know, you're always on your computer and, you know, you don't have that ability to switch off because your home has also become your office. So you feel like when you're at home, you're also in your office. Seven, a different form of visibility. So again, you're not um, visible to all your teammates, to your managers. Um, they, um, you know, you might not be the first person to come in mind, maybe if there is um, a promotion. Distractions, again, we talked about that. I'm not going to spend too much time. If you live with your family or if you have other responsibilities at home that can sometimes distract you. Um, nine, advancement can be challenging for certain positions. So a lot of questions we get is, can I be promoted to a manager if I work from home? Can I manage a team working from home? It is possible, but some companies don't tolerate that idea that we have like a high level you know, position working from home. Is it, is it possible for you to manage from home? Absolutely. As long as you have, you know, the right discipline and the right training and the right experience, you definitely can. Um, but it can sometimes be a challenge. And again, trust. So a lot of companies do not trust their employees, especially before COVID. They did not trust their employees to work from home and work on their own time. They felt like they constantly had to be supervised and watched for them to work. So. You can stay productive while working at home, okay? It's not, there are distractions, but everywhere in life there's distractions. If you go to the office, you may see, oh, Cecilia's wearing a nice outfit today. That's a distraction, okay? Everywhere in life there's distractions, but it's about you having discipline. So here's how you can stay um, motivated and, and productive during work. 
So maintain regular office. Uh, uh, regular working hours. So if you are at the office and you work nine to five, work nine to five at home, you know, start your working day at nine, switch off at five, unless of course you need to take a break in the middle of the day. Again, you have a doctor's appointment and a last minute emergency, you make that hour up later. Create an agenda and task list. So for me at the beginning of my work week, every Monday, what I do is I make a list of things I want to accomplish at, by the end of the day. Okay, so I want to finish this task. I need to meet with these certain people. I make sure I accomplish it. And then I compare it the next week. Did I accomplish everything or, is, or am I lacking behind, right? Creating a designated workspace. I know we mentioned this a long time, uh, a lot of times, but again, a workspace that's comfortable for you both physically and mentally. So a place where you can concentrate and a place where you're comfortable. Create clear rules around your work in your household, right? So I right now have a sign at my door. It's not a sign, I have a sticker. Every time I'm in a meeting, I put that sticker on my door so that my siblings or anyone in my house does not come barging in that door and disrupt, right? So make, you know, create rules that, okay, during these hours, I need no distractions. Unless it's a, you know, it, it's an emergency, please don't bother me. Leave home and do outdoor activities. This is really important because you spend, you know, when you work at home, you will spend so many time, you know, so much time at home that you'll forget to go outside and you'll, you know, be tired from staying at home. So when you go out and you do these outdoor activities, you kind of come back home and, you know, it can be, you know, a hike, a swim, going to the mall, seeing friends, you know, you're just leaving that home. You're leaving that environment and coming refreshed the next day. Keep channels of communication open with your manager and coworkers. Also important, don't just message your colleague or your manager or your coworker when you need something for a task. Send, um, you know, send a message every day and now and then, hey, how are you doing? Just want to make sure you had a good weekend. Develop that type of relationship. Make sure you're showing up to all your meetings and you're speaking up. Use your voice. Don't be shy. I know it's sometimes very shy to you know, use your voice in meetings, you're afraid you might interrupt someone, believe me, it's my biggest fear that I'm always interrupting someone, but, you know, speak up, you know, make sure your voice is being heard. Use your vacation and sick days. Why did we include this in, you know, in, included this point in this slide? Because when you work from home, you sometimes don't use your sick days. So a few weeks ago, I had COVID again, and I was like, you know what? I'm working from home anyways. I don't need to take a sick day. By the time I tested negative for COVID, I realized that because I didn't take a time off, I was really, really tired. I was, you know, my, my body was battling um, a sickness and I was also, you know, working. And so I, I realized I should have probably used my sick days and, you know, probably would have been much more energized to come back to work after um, overcoming COVID. Pursue opportunities for professional development and growth. Again, invest in yourself. Education is lifelong, okay? So make sure you're always um, utilizing any programs, any courses, online courses, any opportunities to develop you professionally. The Young Thinkers program is a great resource for you guys to utilize to develop your skills um, you know, professionally and hopefully you know, get you to where you wanna be in your career. Again, a common myth is that if I work from home, I can't develop a relationship with your coworkers. And I'm here to tell you that through working with ASU, I've developed some of the most, you know, some of the best relationships with my coworkers. And we probably see each other maybe once a year, once every two years, but we make sure that we establish, you know, a, um, a few times a month where we connect with each other just to talk about social things, you know, How's your family? How, you know, what did you do on your weekend, right? You're, you're not just using them for work. You're not just connecting, you know, with them when you need a task done. You're connecting with them. You're forming relationships on a, on a different note. So again, make sure you're carving time out for virtual meetings just for fun. Um, initiate and engage in team activities or icebreakers. So when we have team meetings, Sometimes, you know, we'll take the first five minutes and, and discuss about like what we what we did over the weekend, something interesting that, you know, probably popped up on Facebook or, um, you know, a, a vacation that we're, you know, we're, we're coming up with soon. That kind of creates a bit of 
um, more of a cohesive team because they're more comfortable with each other when they know, you know a little more personal details about you. Using your webcam, okay? It makes these team meetings more personal. So it's almost as if you're meeting them in person, but it's in your own environment. So I am guilty of sometimes not using my webcam, but I can tell you it does make a difference when you do and other teammates do as well. Engage in virtual social hours. So again, don't just be all about uh, business and of course, respect each other's time zones. So if I message my colleague in Arizona, who's 11 hours away, I do not, sorry, 11 hour time difference away, I will not expect them to, to answer me right away because it's nighttime for them and it's morning for me. So respecting each other's time zones is very important. So remember, despite you working from home, professionalism is still important in virtual meetings. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember this, this, this interview um, you know, on your screen of this guy in BBC um, who was being interviewed on the news and then his kids just walked in. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, let me see um, in the chat if you guys are, are, you know, are aware of it. All right, so let's see if we can, would you like, you guys, would you like, guys like to see it played um, on Zoom if you guys don't know it? Yeah, it's one of the funniest thing ever. So I'll just um, play it real quick for those of you who don't know. All right. So hopefully the sound will work as well. So this is another challenge of virtual. <laughs> All righty, so. Okay, so if you guys have never seen this video before, that's basically what I'm referring to. <laughs> um, it was just an interview that um, happened on air and um, the interviewee obviously was not prepared or he didn't even um, you know, probably tell his household about the interview that he was having. So they weren't aware and they weren't, he wasn't ready. Um, so let's go back to the presentation. So I think that's an excellent and it's a funny example of what we mean <laughs> by um, you know, preparing to be ready. Silence your notifications is very important. So whether it's notifications on screen or um, you know, notifications on your phone that's next to you, make sure those are silent so they don't interfere. Be engaged in meetings. Um, you don't wanna be that type of person in a meeting if a question is asked to you and you're not paying attention and uh, you know, you're kind of like, huh, what, can you repeat? What were you guys talking about? You know, it's not really professional. Um, so make sure you're always engaged. Keep a notebook with you. Um, it helps you keep, stay focused, you know, writing notes on what's being discussed. Have a professional background when on camera. So don't have a messy house behind you. If you, if you do have a messy house, use a virtual background or use a plain background. Again, keep it professional. Unmute your microphone only when speaking um, because sometimes you'll have random noises come, you know, come in, in the way and then you don't want it to disrupt the other person speaking. So make sure you, you um, unmute when you speak and you mute when you're not speaking. And of course, again, without being said, conduct your meetings in areas with no distractions and no background noises. So it's not distracting for you or the, the other teammates who are in the meeting as well. So remote work in the Middle East. So in the United Arab Emirates, um, it's becoming the leading country for, um, and it's ranked ahead of countries like Italy, Japan, and Hong Kong for remote working environments. Um, also, the UAE has approved remote working visas. So if you are not employed by the country, you can apply for um, a visa that allows you to work from, from the UAE, regardless of where your company is. Um, and of course, the Ministry of Human Resources have allowed Fridays to be remote working days in the public sector, because obviously we had that shift from Monday to Friday, our working weeks. And so to accommodate for Jama'a prayer, um, they allowed employees to work from home. And in the Arab region, 
a large number of companies like Deloitte, Apple, and PricewaterhouseCoopers, they've adopted hybrid schemes. So what does hybrid mean? Hybrid mean, means two, right? So both. So working from home and working remote. So employees can choose. All right. So based on everything you've learned today, would you guys work remotely or from the office? So you're going to have a poll in front of your screen. If you can please answer your preference and let's get to know how we've influenced you guys today. Okay, and if you guys in the chat can answer why um, you would like to work from an office or remote, just so we, again, we also learn from you. All right, so I'm gonna close the poll and I will share results for everyone to see. So you see a lot of people want, you know, remote in some, in one form or another, whether it's just majority of days, um, sorry, some of the days working remotely or entirely remotely, um, and only a few, about 15% would want to work from an office. So that's very interesting. Um, and let me know why, like, why do you want to, whether it's working or studying, why would you want to work from the office or or in university or why from home? So some people said that they uh, prefer to work remotely for flexibility. Um, they wanna be with students. Yeah. So very interesting. All right. So this concludes our webinar for today. Um, and of course, what I would like for you all to do, I have the URL at the bottom. If you don't have an account with the Young Thinkers program, we would love for you to join our community at www.youngthinker.org. And I've also listed um, in front of you um, courses that I would recommend you that would help prepare you for a virtual working environment. Um, the one in yellow, Communication 401, that is a course that will be coming soon within the next few weeks. So we'll make sure to send you an email um, when that course is live. But all these courses that we've listed, um, of course, they're all free of charge and you earn certificates of completion to add onto your CV towards the end. 